Hey everyone, I'm Jake from Jake M Media and today I'm going to be showing you how to take better pictures with the Canon PowerShot ELF 360HS. Let's get into it. All right guys, let's jump right into this video, starting off with the best camera settings. All right, so here we are with the Canon PowerShot ELF 360HS, and we're gonna go through all the best settings for taking photos with this camera. So let's start by turning it on. Once we have it on, let's hit the function set button right there. And the first thing that we're gonna mess, up, mess with is actually the record mode. So let's select the, the record mode right here by hitting the function set button. That takes us into the record modes. And you're gonna wanna set it to P for program. It's probably gonna be set to auto uh, when you first turn it on, but you're not gonna want that. That's not gonna give you full control of the camera. So set that to P so you can have full control over all the settings within this camera. All right, now that we have the record mode set, let's go up to the top of the settings here and we're gonna mess with the light metering next. So the light metering, I'm not sure what this will be set to, but you're gonna to wanna to go into light metering and make sure that it's set to evaluative. This is gonna make your camera take light readings throughout the whole frame and determine the overall exposure. So this is gonna help you take photos uh, because the camera is gonna tell you uh, what the best overall exposure is gonna be for your specific setting. All right, after light metering, let's go down to the My Colors and we're just simply going to want to turn this off. If you set it to any other settings, it's just going to mess with the colors. So like, for instance, if we go down to black and white, and that's just going to make all your pictures black and white. Unless you want that, you don't really need it. You can usually alter the photos in post-production. So let's just turn that off for now. All right, and after the My Colors, we're going to want to set our white balance. And you're going to want to set this to whatever scenario that you're in. So you have a bunch of different settings here, starting off with auto white balance. That's what AWB stands for, auto white balance. Um, this is typ typically good for beginners because they're not used to the different types of environments. But normally setting white balance isn't too complicated. For instance, you have daylight. Uh, that's for shooting. That's if you're shooting out in the daylight, bright light. Uh, if, if the sun's out and it's super sunny, you're going to want to use this. And then you have cloudy right below that. You should use that for cloudy days. And then below that, tungsten and so on and so forth. You have fluorescent, fluorescent H, and then custom right there at the bottom. So all you're going to need to do for this is just set it to whatever um, setting you need to for your specific scene. All right, and then after white balance, we're going to go down to the next one, which is ISO speed. We're going to want to go into this and set it to the lowest setting possible without messing up your exposure or brightness within your photo. Um, this, you, you want to set this as low as possible because it's going to take out all the noise and grain within your photo. If you set it too high, like to 3200, the highest setting, it's going to be really noisy and really grainy. You'll definitely be able to see it throughout your photos. So if you can, set it as low as you can and you'll get a very desired look with minimal noise and grain. However, if you're still unsure about ISO and where to set it at, you can always set it to I or auto ISO, and that's just gonna set it to the best setting for your uh, scene that you're in. All right, and then after ISO speed, we're gonna go down and skip over record mode because we already set that, and we're gonna go to the exposure, the plus minus expo exposure. You probably don't need to adjust this just because most cameras nowadays are their, their evaluative metering, it sets the exposure normally to the best setting. Um, but this is just gonna mess with your exposure where however bright or dark you want it. So if you want it this dark, then the camera is gonna make the correct adjustments to the settings and it's gonna take a picture that's this dark. But on the other hand, if you want a, a brighter photo, the camera is gonna make the correct adjustments and make it plus two over that zero uh, for the brightness. But normally, you're not gonna wanna mess with this because the camera is usually set to the best overall setting. So just don't play with this one. 
Okay, and then after the plus minus exposure, we're gonna wanna go down to the self timer. And this one's pretty self-explanatory here. The self timer is just gonna set a timer for your photos. Uh, once the timer goes off, it's gonna take a photo, obviously. Um, you're gonna, gonna only wanna use this if you're taking a self portrait, group portrait, or have the camera on a tripod taking a long exposure photo. Otherwise, you're not really gonna wanna use this, so let's leave it off for the time being. All right, and then after self timer, we're gonna go down again and we have the drive mode. And you're gonna wanna set this to single shooting unless you're photographing sports or fast action. If you are photographing sports or fast action, let's go in here and you're gonna wanna go down to continuous shooting. This is gonna allow you to hold down the shutter button and take continuous photos until you let go of that shutter button. But for anything other than those sports or fast action, we can just leave it on single shooting. All right, and then after the drive mode, you're gonna wanna go down to aspect ratio, and you're gonna wanna set this to four by three if it isn't already set to that. That's gonna give you the most megapixels uh, for your photos. Okay, and then after the aspect ratio, we're gonna go down to recording pixels and set this to L because it's gonna give you the highest resolution for this camera. Then after recording pixels, we have the final setting on this quick settings area and that's gonna be compression. You're gonna to wanna to set the compression to super fine because it's gonna give you the most detail for your photos. All right, now that we're done with the quick settings area on this camera, we're gonna get out of here and go down to the bottom right of the camera and hit the menu button right there. That's gonna take us into the actual menu and we can make more adjustments to the settings from here. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to adjust is the AF frame. This is gonna be set to face AI AF and instead of using that we're going to want to go to center. Now what this is going to do is put a little tiny focus box on your LCD screen. That's what I'm talking about there, right there, that little tiny focus box right in the middle. If you don't have it set to center and instead set to face AIAF, if we go back, you're not going to see that because that face AIAF is usually used for taking photos of people, mainly self-portraits because you can't really see where uh, the, the focus box is in the frame. So it's usually easier to use face AIAF for that. But instead we're gonna set it to center because we're gonna be taking pictures of other things. All right, now that we set the AF frame, let's go down to the AF frame size and we're gonna set that uh, this really depends on your situation, but you have small and normal to choose from. And in my opinion, you're normally going to want to set this to small because it's going to give you the ability to fine tune those focus adjustments. So here I'll show you an example. There's what the small one looks like. And then we'll go down and adjust it back to normal. The normal one is obviously much bigger. So let's say if you were trying to focus on something small in the frame, it's gonna be much more difficult with this normal size box rather than the small size box. All right, then after that, we're gonna go down to digital zoom and just make sure this is set to standard. I don't really have much to say about this because you're not gonna to wanna to use the digital zoom much anyways, but the standard digital zoom is good enough for any situation where you do need to use the digital zoom. All right, and then we're gonna go down to AF point zoom. And what this does is just, it magnifies the area that you're focused on. So see that water bottle? It's magnified on the bottom of the water bottle there. And it just helps you fine tune your focus adjustments. Uh, I don't really need it, so I just leave it set to off. All right, and then after that, we're gonna go down to servo AF. And normally you want this set to off if you're gonna be taking pictures of still objects. But if you're gonna be taking pictures of sports or any moving objects, you're gonna to wanna to turn it to on because for example, if I wanna focus on the water bottle here, here, it's not moving, no, but if it were, I'd wanna keep it within that blue box if it were moving to the right because it would track it um, as far as focus goes the whole way. But normally you're gonna wanna leave it set to off, like I said, if you're taking pictures of still objects. Okay, and then we're gonna move on to continuous AF. This one's kind of preference. It doesn't really have much to do with taking photos because um, 
if you turn it off, it's just not going to continuously focus when you don't have your hand on the shutter button. Uh, so if you have it on, um, for example, I'm not holding my finger down on the shutter, but if I move it, it's going to keep whatever is in that box in focus. So you don't really need it on or off. Like I don't really understand why it's a function, but I guess it's there if you really do need it. All right, and then next on the list, we have the AF Assist Beam. This is just the red light that shoots off when you focus. I turned it off, um, but if you turn it on, obviously there's a red light. It'll come on, I hit the focus, there it was. Focus again, there it was. So it's it just helps overall when the camera is trying to focus in dark areas. So normally it's just best to leave it on. All right, and then we're gonna go down and skip over flash settings because that's not anything we need to worry about and go down to eye contrast and turn that off. The reason I turn this off is because it says it retains the shadow detail and high contrast scenes. But honestly, when it comes to in camera like adjustments as far as like, let's say noise reduction, if this camera had noise reduction, I'd turn that off too just because I don't like the in-camera noise reduction. If I really need to make noise reduction, I do that in post-production. Um, so this setting is just very similar to something like that as far as that goes. Okay, and now we'll go down to the last setting on the list that we need to mess with, and that's grid lines. Just turn these on because it's gonna allow you to see these lines right here on the LCD screen. I just like having them on because it's easier to see where the best possible area is for the rule of thirds. If you don't know what the rule of thirds is, I have a video on that. I'm going to link it above in the card and you can go check that out if you really want to. So anyways, those are the best overall settings for this camera if you're going to be using it for pictures. With that said, let's get back to me and I'm going to go over some quick tips for taking better pictures with this camera. All right, now that you have the best possible settings, let's get into the actual tips. Number one, use the autofocus box to focus and recompose. Now that you change the focus mode from the face detect to the box, it should make focusing much easier. You should now be able to focus directly on your subject by putting your subject in that focus box, pressing the shutter halfway down, and then recomposing and taking the picture. Using this focus mode basically allows you to pick the area of focus in the picture and not leaving everything up to the camera. And that leads us to tip number two, keep the ISO as low as possible without messing up the exposure. Keeping the ISO low is gonna do two main things to your picture. One, it's gonna turn down the brightness, and two, it's gonna reduce the amount of noise or grain in your photograph. So if you don't want a grainy photo, turn down the ISO. Now for tip number three, use the rule of thirds with the grid lines. Now that we turn the grid lines on on our camera, we can use these to properly compose our photos. All you have to do is line your subject up with one of the lines on the grid, preferably where two of them meet, and then take the picture. The main reason we do this is because that's where the eye naturally goes to when people look at a picture. So it just makes everything much more appealing to look at in the frame. Moving on, we have tip number four, zoom in with your lens and your feet. First of all, zooming in with your lens can do a number of different things. Just to list a few, it can give you a different angle, compress the background, and even give you a little bit of bokeh. However, just because you can zoom with your lens doesn't mean you shouldn't move your feet. Instead of zooming in with your lens, maybe it's a better idea to walk up to the subject and use a wide angle. Or maybe it's the opposite and you don't want to use a wide angle lens up close because you're taking portraits and you're going to warp your subject. So instead, maybe you should back up and use a telephoto zoom lens instead. This tip really depends on your situation and it's not gonna be a one size fits all, so just do whatever looks best. Now for tip number five, don't shoot from a normal standing position. Instead of raising the camera to your normal eye level, try and get low or high angles. This is gonna make for a really unique photo and help you stand out from the crowd. And it's not only shooting from high and low angles, you should also try shooting your subject from different positions as well. And that leads me to tip number six, shoot both vertical and horizontal. Not all photos have to be shot in horizontal orientation, and I feel like a lot of photographers think this when they're first starting out. So try turning that camera sideways and shoot vertically for once so you can get a different look to your photos. And now for tip number seven, get a variety of different shots. Instead of only shooting close-ups, try and shoot a few other distances like medium shots, full shots, wide shots, establishing shots, really anything you can think of. 
This will add some variety to your photos so they don't all look identical. All right, and now for my final tip, practice. You can watch this video over and over again and learn all the tips that you want, but your photography is not gonna get better unless you practice. So make sure that you take every chance that you get and take photos as often as possible so you can build up your portfolio and gain some experience. All right, and those are all the tips that I have for you on how to take better photos with the Canon PowerShot ELF 360HS. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, subscribe by clicking right here. Thanks for watching and always remember to capture great moments.